have Orc by OCs. Um, and that's not OCs as in the letter C, that's C's as in seeing. And as, I, I'm not sure if there's a pun in that name or what is going on there, but whatever. It's probably a pun. Yeah. Just admit, the album cover is not something that would really catch my attention. Uh, it's kind of bland. Yeah, it's just the top half of an orc's head with a... What colour back... What? It's all... It's kind of orange to teal kind of gradient going on. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really... There's not really much going on there. It's not like with the Charm the Fury where it's sort of like this bright, vibrant skull with hypnotic eyes. It's sort of like... <laughs> or just some very, very disturbing things like Faith No More, the nearest album. Oh, God. Or well, one different Townsend album where he's just looking really sinister, naked, just crouching down. Trying to think which one that is. You were, you're the one that should know this. Georgig. Yeah, but I can't remember if I'm like, not overly familiar with all of his work. I probably should listen to more of his work more often. But, uh... Well, I'm hardly going to argue against that statement. Infinity. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, Orc. It's uh, the 70s style psychedelia cross rock material. Yeah. And it, it's pretty good, honestly. Yeah. I quite like it. Well, and interestingly enough, I saw mentions when people talking about it. Of um, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, which interestingly enough just had a new album out via Blood Music like a week ago. Oh! So you have to check out that as well, because Blood Music does nothing wrong, it seems. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of. They seem to have a knack for picking up things that are consistently good. Um, but yeah, this is a really fun album. Um, I really wasn't sure what to expect, but I wasn't expecting Psychedelia. Um,. Uh, I mean, from the band's name, I was kind of expecting sort of that really smug sort of indie pop rock kind of shit. But contrast that with Orc, and I was sort of like, well, maybe it's going to be hard rock. I don't know. Um, but yeah, psychedelic rock, which is kind of my bag a lot of the time. You think your bag is made of Orcs? Because that's, that's kind of, you know, that's unfair animal cruelty. <laughs> um, I'd say closest comparisons would be things like um, the Lemon Pipers and the Kinks. Yeah, I can I can do that. I mean, they do sound like kind of like a um kind of a earlier, more seventies version of Quatso in places I think as well. Which band? Queens of Stone Age. Oh yeah, yeah, I can. S- you can hear kind of elements of them in there. I quite like Quatso, so that's that's good for me. Um, I'd say. Also, elements of Colosseum and Traffic, if you're at all familiar with them. Uh, not Colosseum, but Traffic, I I know a vague amount of that. Mm. Um, it's kind of like a good blending of the different styles, with their own flair added to it. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, it is very reminiscent of music of the kind of 70s era. I keep saying 70s, that's kind of era that I'm familiar with this kind of music from. Mm. But... It's kind of them looking back and thinking, okay, it's like 40 years ago from now, but we're going to do it in the modern day and make it sound kind of like that. Mm. And they managed to pull it off. It comes across as being a very listenable album. Yeah. It'd be some prog influence here and there as well. To, mm. Which, as we mentioned in quite a few occasions, we quite like prog. So yeah. You know, it's not at the forefront, it's still nice to have. It's like kind of long, winding instrumental passages here and there. Mm. It's okay, it's a song that's almost instrumental in themselves and a few vocals. Yeah. Um... There's quite a few songs that stand out on this album, like um, the opening track of Static God, which um, it's not often that you encounter the use of static as an instrument. Mm. That's what I was meaning with having Shade of the Edgar Winter Group, because um, he would use all sorts of instruments, even things that you were sort of like, what the fuck is that? I don't know, but I'm going to make a face-melting solo out of it. <laughs> we still have a lot of reverb on the last half. I mean, it's supposed to evident probably in um, Drowned Beast. Mm. Got a lot of heavy reverb and kind of opening kind of slow, kind of doom, kind of doom rock kind of style thing going on there. I guess. 
then you've got things like Cooling Tower, which has some rather interesting vocal use. Mm. Also, I'm going through the album, just picking back to the tracks again, because I listened to it recently. But um, they've got quite a lot of variety going on here as well. Yeah. None of it feels played out because of that variety. It always feels like you're going to hear something new as the album progresses. It, I mean, this is where we get into the actual meaning of psychedelic. It means mind-revealing. And that kind of feels like the design of this album to sort of reveal the mind in a certain manner. Uh, I'm risking pr- pretentious statements here, but it is sort of... It's almost like the creative id of the band put into an album. I mean, I don't know if their other albums are similar to this. I I only found out about them going through all the albums from the last few months. Interesting. Also, I just finally realised what the um, kind of main melody line in um, Cooling Tower makes me think of. Mm-hmm. We think of Franz Ferdinand. We wouldn't just been bugging me since I listened to it. I was like, this makes me think of another song, but I can't think what song. But I just realised it was um, one of the Franz Ferdinand songs from my first album. I can't comment that much as I only know like one or two songs from Franz Ferdinand. Yeah, listen to the first album, don't bother with the rest. Well, the two songs I know are the ones that everyone knows. <laughs> um. Uh, Cadaver Dog, that's an interesting one, because that's the one where it's all like Coliseum and Traffic and early Alice Cooper. Uh, people might might go, wait, what? When I say Alice Cooper, but the thing is, if you listen to his really early stuff, there's a lot of jazz influence and much more psychedelic stuff going on with his very early stuff when it was um, when they were the Spiders. Or uh, that when the band was Alice Cooper and he was just Vincent Fernier. Yeah, um, yeah. Overall, though, I like this album. Yeah, I'm definitely going to look into more of their stuff. Um, certainly, an album that I will go back to. Uh, rating wise, I'm a bit uncertain. I'm thinking three point five. Yeah, it's definitely above average. I, I, I'd be closer to a four, but. I, I think my initial rating was a bit generous with a 4.5, but it's still a solid 4. It's definitely a good album, and I reckon it will grow on me as well, so... Hmm. That seems to be a running theme for these albums. Well, well, yeah, check it out. If you like some kind of psychedelic rock or 70s style rock or Queens of the Stone Age or numerous other bands that we've mentioned in this review, then give it a shot. Yeah. And if you hear one song and don't like it, I recommend checking out some of the other songs, because a lot of them are very different. We're going to say the same kind of core sound, I guess, but there's a lot of variety and a lot of everything, really. So. Yeah. It's very much a case of you can't write off the album simply because of one song that you might not like. And, I mean, we have very eclectic tastes, so it kind of appeals to a lot of our, you know, it being a variety album. Uh, I'm just repeating stuff I've already said, really. Uh, (laughs) Well, I think we've uh, covered the basics here. Yeah. Next album. (laughs) 